It was good for us. We got we got to take a couple days off um, uh, after the uh, after our last game. You know, leading up here to the final stretch of the season. Um, you know, our guys got to be able to re-energize their, you know, kind of re-energize themselves, get their legs back. You know, we'll start back up practice today, um, practice tomorrow as well. Obviously, leading up to Georgetown. You know, I, you know, Georgetown. Um, you know, we played them back in January. Um, you know, they've been injured quite a bit since since then. You know, their big fella Yurt Seven's been out several games, and so has Mac McClung. Um, both those guys played against us in Game One. Um, you know, we're treating it like they're going to play in, here in Game Two. Um, not sure if they will or not, but either way, we're going to prepare for it. Um, you know, Coach Ewing's done a great job, um, you know, making it work, you know, finding a way um, through a really, really, to me, which to me is the best conference in the entire country, you know, still having some success, even though they've had a lot of injuries and roster turnover here this year. And kudos to Coach Ewing for that. But, you know, we got to be able to answer the bell inside with you at seven. And, uh, I thought we did a good job in him in game one. Tyreek did a terrific job of being physical with him, uh, trying to limit his touches as best as possible and blocking him out. Um, and then McClung's obviously a tremendous scorer. Javon Blair's a tremendous scorer. Um, they've had some senior guards really step up here as of late, Terrell Allen and, uh, and Mosley. Um, both those guys are playing at a really high level. So uh, this is a great opportunity for us to go get another road kill here on Sunday. Coach, at this point in the season, I think – Teams have either, you know, safely secured an NCAA tournament spot or they're very much still fighting for that spot. And where do you kind of stand on the fact that your team is still fighting? Obviously, it's, it's more stressful, but does a part of you like the fact that, that your guys can't afford to get comfortable or, or complacent late right now, that they're, that they're still fighting? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're still fighting for it. You know, it, it's out there, but our, our whole focus is on Georgetown. You know, I could care less. Like if if we take care of business, you know, we'll, we'll be fine. And you know, we, we got a huge opportunity, obviously, at Georgetown, and uh, the opportunity to get a road tier, you know, road kill, tier one win, um, which would go a long way, obviously, in securing, you know, a, an NCAA tournament uh, berth. The last time you played Georgetown was when you started the new lineup. It was right after the Marquette game. Yep. Now that it's kind of full circle, do you like? the identity that this brings to the team, or do you want to see anything different out of this lineup, or do you plan to tinker with it moving forward? Yeah, I think, it's, again, I wouldn't say it's set in stone, Shannon, by any means. You know, we'll, we'll make adjustments throughout the season as, as need be. You know, we've had some success with it, um, you know, but I think it has its struggles as well, you know. Um, we try to hide those weaknesses as best as we can, but I do think it's helped us on the glass. Uh, definitely didn't help us on the glass against DePaul, um, but, um, but I do think it's helped us form a little bit more of an identity inside um, and toughness around the rim. You know, we got the chance to talk to Najee after the DePaul game, and he kind of shrugged it off like he was fine, but he obviously left the floor with what looked like a shoulder injury. Mm -hmm. Did, has anything more come of that, or is he, is he good to go going forward? Yeah, he's fine. Um, I think he just had a little stinger in his shoulder. Um, but he lifted. I was just in the weight room just a little bit ago. I saw him in there lifting bench press. And so, yeah, he, he's more than fine. Uh, Bryce Moore has played, I think, eight minutes in the last three games. Is he feeling healthy at this point? Uh, or how would you kind of uh, talk about those minutes? Yeah, you know, um, you know, again, we, we uh, I go off my eye a little bit, you know, like um, you know, I, the teams of, you know, it may not be specifically Bryce's fault, but uh, but teams have kind of gone on runs when he's been in there. Um, and, you know, you look at the analytical data uh, as well as the eye test as well. We, we do both. You know, again, I don't, we're not going to just be all numbers or all eye tests. Um, and it would tell you that that's been the play recently. Now, that doesn't mean that that can't change moving forward, right? You know, he's got to be better. He's got to play better. He's got to, you know, take advantage of his opportunities on offense. And then defensively, he's got to be really good for us. And I think that's what he can really bring to our team. Travis, is there a guy, I mean, obviously these next three games are huge and beyond that, but is there a guy in your team right now that you can look in his eye when the game is really up against it and just know that he can deliver a win for you? Yeah, I think there's several guys. You know, I, you know, I, Najee, Najee's had that burn. You can just tell in his eyes. And, and same thing with Paul, same thing with Tyreek. You know, th those guys understand what's at stake. And, and my job is to get them to focus just on the next game. <laughs> or the next possession, right, or the next four-minute war, try to break it down into smaller parts, you know, for our guys. Um, but I do, I see our, our guys, 
They're working. They understand. They got that fire right now, which is good to see, especially at this point in the year. Last year, the, the tournament talk was a long shot. It wasn't even really much buzz around the media locally uh, or even nationally. Do you enjoy, I mean, obviously it's noise, I know that, but do you enjoy the fact that, hey, these games do mean a ton, these next three, because we're right in this thing right now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is what our program's built around, you know, is it, making the tournament. Uh, we obviously the end goal is at some point get this thing to a Final Four national championship level, and and uh, I mean you look at all the all the great players, teams, coaches that have come before before Team ninety eight here, um, and that's who we play for, and and that's why a lot of these young men came to Xavier, right? Because of all the NCAA tournament success that we've had. Um, you know, again, it's a great opportunity for us. You know, we get to write our own story here moving forward. Coach uh, Tyreek Jones didn't have necessarily a, a Tyreek Jones kind of night the, the other night, but you all were still able to win. Uh, how much more do you expect from him, and do you feel like uh, he's an integral part as you all try to push for this tournament? Yeah, Tyreek's our heart and soul. Um, he, he was not good. I made, I made sure he knew that loud and clear um, through film and through meeting with him. He's got to be better. And, and, again, better doesn't mean, yeah, I'm, I want him to finish everything around the rim. <laughs> you know, I, and, but at the same time, it's the motor piece. Because our our team takes a lot a lot of his character you know his his personality on, and and I told him he can't have days off. There are no days off. And days off mean losses, and uh, and he knows that, and he's going to get that corrected moving forward. And and give DePaul a lot of credit. You know they they uh, they did a good job on him, but the motor piece has to always be there for him. And what other ways is he impacting the game when he's not producing like you expect him to? Yeah, you know, and obviously he's rebounded at a at an incredible rate, but, you know, he, his defense, you know, I think our defense has gotten significantly better here over the last 10 games because of Tyreek, whether it's, you know, again, from a fan's perspective, but our ball screen defense, they may not notice that. I mean, just his, his motor off the ball, because Tyreek has the ability to guard on the perimeter, and he has the ability to guard in the post, do both. You know, make a guy like Yurt Seven, who's one of the better post players in the entire country offensively, make his catches really, really tough. You know, when he's locked in and engaged, we're a completely different team. Thank you.